Hey, hey, there it is. Don't guess who we have here back for. It's actually number 17. It is, of course, everybody's favourite. It's John Waters. John, how are we doing, sir? Are you getting on Hello, well? Dude. 17, is it? Wow. We this is 17. Seven. Look, yeah. the numbers, yeah, they're accumulating there at a fast level. So look, at, yeah, like obviously lots to discuss, as we always do, you know, move it around, uh, cover there a lot of issues, mainly, of course, focused in on Ireland. But, you know, if John wants to venture out of Ireland there and around the world, I'm sure there's lots of subject matter there also. Um, you know, just to actually mention, I was talking there to a friend now, I'm just in the door there, and I was jungling all around my uh, different uh, voicemails there and Telegram. And I just got an interesting one. It just really puts things into context where we actually are today. So it's this gentleman, he has a friend and his girlfriend has a daughter that's in a primary school in a place in Mayo. And she came home one day recently in absolutely hysterics, broken down because she's the only Irish girl in the class. And not because any of this racism or anything that they were calling her red, blue, black, green or anything. It's because she could not understand the children when they were communicating and felt so isolated. And it's just a different angle to come at. In Ireland, can you believe that in 2024, just a young little Irish girl going to school in the beautiful county of Mayo, she's the only Irish kid and she doesn't know they might as well be talking double dutch. She can't communicate with the other kids. Yeah, it, this is kind of touching on a, a thing I, I've been saying, that the, all of this talk about openness and diversity and compassion for the other and all this stuff, is based on a completely fallacious idea which is that we the irish are in ireland and we have this benevolent nature by which we reach out to the world and invite in people and we're kind to people and then they're so grateful and then they leave and another people more people come and we're kind to them as well yeah. what this this tells us is what i've been saying that there is a tipping point the silent tipping point which is imminent probably a lot more imminent than we know because the figures are very misleading that they're putting out. And this is a classic example. Already it's arrived in this classroom and it's long past where there's one Irish child in the classroom. Uh, like, this is like, you know, the, the, the end result of our alleged benevolence. Benevolent, to, benevolent towards whom? Mm. Not towards that girl not towards our own children, not towards the next generations of Irish people, if there are any. And, mm -hmm. and this is the thing, you see, that, you know, James, like, there are these factions who are f pushing this agenda. You know, there's the, obviously the secret unknowns who have the agenda of basically replacing the population of Europe. There are the creeps who have the, gen the agenda of basically doing what they're told. Uh, you have all the local hucksters, the Fianna Fáil hucksters and the Fine Gael hucksters who are making big money out of this. You have the PC brigade, you know, the, the woke brigade, the, the guy, the people who live in affluent areas and are not affected by this yeah. yet, yet. And, mm. and now who can afford to, uh, you know, pontificate in a highly, you know, uh, progressive and uh, compassionate and benevolent way, but don't have to suffer yet any of the consequences for any of their own ideas and until such time as they do and then they'll start squawking by which time it'll be too late and they mm. won't have anybody to there to support them because they have abused everybody uh, this is going to it seems go on and on because it doesn't seem to matter what pain or grief an irish person even an irish child suffers there is a bigger agenda which is clothed and cloaked in this notion of benevolence, but which is really about power and money under different headings. Power in the macro sense, the global sense, in, in terms of shifting populations out of Europe. You know, the situation is very, very stark for Europe, James. I mean, people need to really start studying the figures because the demographics are Euro of Europe are absolute nonsense. Like, you know, they. The, the, by 2060, uh, half of Europe, the, European, the people living in Europe at the present rate of movements and, and decline will most likely be non-Europeans. Uh, by the end of this century, it is reckoned that only about 15% of the population of Europe 
would be, and this is at present, but it's God knows what will have happened in the meantime. Yeah. The, the, in other words, the, you, the population of Europe is actually abolishing itself. Uh, and the very same people who, who favor all of this massive inflow, or claim they do, you know, it hasn't affected them yet, claim they do, are also the people who have been pushing abortion, which is one of the factors which is diminishing the European population at an enormous rate. Uh, so, you know, there are so many questions about this that, that really, I, I find it extraordinary even to, to think that there's, that we're actually having to make these arguments. I get, grow weary of, of, of the stupidity yeah. of people that don't altogether say, look, this is nonsense. Can we stop this right now? You know, there's no, I mean, no, no matter what of the, one of their arguments, you know, one of the arguments they keep using, by the way, is because precisely because they have destroyed the, the, the demographic of Europe, they, they, we need to replace, but they don't say that because that's a racist yeah. idea. But we yeah, need to yeah. bring in people, bring in people. It is replacement. The UN called replacement, you know. Uh, and uh, but the, to do the jobs, to do the work that the Europeans are, are able to do, or are willing to do, or whatever, not available to do. Uh, that's it's a funny thing, you know. That's one compartment over here. James is a compartment which is headed artificial intelligence, and under that they tell us that within a very short time all these jobs will be abolished because mm. they'll be done by machines. Could yeah. somebody just wire up those two thoughts and come to a third thought, which might yeah. arrive at some synthesis of sense concerning what the hell is going on? But you know, you know, this is what you, the story you've told is heartbreaking. I mean, you can imagine a child. You can imagine. I mean, yeah. We all know children of that. You know, what age did you say the child was? I think it's primary school, so I'm not sure. I'm guessing it's like fifth or sixth class. So oh, at that age, they're running around, uh, they want to make friends and, you know, that's it. About 11 or 12, you know, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, that, like, yeah, of course they do. They want to yeah. have fun. They want to talk. They want to laugh. You know, yeah. the idea of that, and this is, of course, imagine if that were a black child and there were all the other children in the class were, were Irish children. And, yeah. and imagine that that child was heartbroken. Imagine the newspapers, the Irish slimes, crimes, mm. you know, front page. You know the terrible mm. racism of ireland against this child but it's okay yeah. if it's an irish girl nobody yeah. cares you know so this is the most profoundly hypocritical and disgusting country on earth at this moment i would say james that's all i have to say about it you know john i'd, I'd have to nearly agree at this stage it's just it's nearly really bizarre it's been such a 2020 uh gave us gave a few of us 2020 vision we did not realize that the level of corruption and um, that this country the level of venal and avaricious you know boffins and gougers that were actually out there in positions of power and influence everywhere john from offices administrations departments you you name it now yeah. we want to keep this we want to also keep this balance bear in mind that there are counties out there that are fighting they're not being shown by the corporate media they might have their little facebook groups instagram groups we saw in ross gray we know that it's a sort of carbon copy set up uh, they bring in a couple of the apparatchiks to mislead them and start this rubbish. They throw in a few red herrings. The biggest red herring to mislead people is that, oh, God, we're not, you're not racist. You're not racist. People need to forget that. Brush that nonsense off. That, that's that level of subterfuge there, that level of, you know, it's real cynical way to, to, to attack the Irish people. But I think that hopefully that that measure, that it's starting to deplete in, in its level of, you know, ability really to hoodwink people because they need to, you know, stick together, have those local groups. I know we have Permoy. John, there's so many different places that it, that they're getting out. And I suppose yeah. I just want to say the positive just thing about that is that these are mothers, let's say, of fathers that used to have a, you know, a lifestyle of watching RT and having their newspaper and thinking that everything was, as the English say, tickety-boo. And now they're realising, you know, how they're being treated and how they're being isolated. Now you won't go back well, to sleep. Well, I do. I, yeah, I, I do think there, I can, I've been picking up um, a lot of stuff. I mean, the creeps are beginning to pull back now. You know, they're talking about, um, oh, we understand people's issues and blah, blah. And, you know, we're going to contain, you know, we're, you know, the number of asylum seekers, we're going to look at that. And, you know, maybe we're going to look at the payments to Ukrainians, all Ukrainians in the in the future, you know, blah, blah. Now, of course, this is again subterfuge, but nevertheless, it shows that there is something changing 
underneath your subterranean change you know and and you know i do think that is the case i think that that very thing that you mentioned about the racist taunt that the spell word it is losing its power because mm -hmm. people are beginning to realize that the consequences of reacting to it are far too great for you to do that anymore now, you know the, the consequences of, of of being terrified of being called a racist more than anything are basically the obliteration of Ireland and its culture and its people and the home of your children. And that's too high a prize even for Paddy, you know, uh, who was willing to go along with any old nonsense, you know, for a quiet life and a bit of a, a pint yeah. and a drink, you know, and a, and a, and a joke. But uh, I even noticed it myself, because sometimes, you know, we are walking kind of receptors for cultural kind of phenomena, you know, even though we're not aware of it. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I, I, when I talk about that kind of spell word and the effects of people, I mean, that's out of pure personal experience, you know. But I had a very interesting experience today as I was walking down the street. I just was walking down, I'd lead on my own, I, I, and uh, it was kind of drizzling rain, you know, and I kind of fair, sort of half noticed a guy the far side of the road, you know. And uh, he would be a kind of an oldish guy, but, I mean, he's probably younger than me, like, but they're, these fellas, like, they're, around where I live, like, they're all kind of deadbeats you know they're kind of like don't kind of you know that kind of way that the irish are brought into like where they're kind of dopey and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah the dower they're dower yeah yeah but they don't know where they are and, and, and what's yeah. going on you know? deplored them deplored yeah. it's here john what is huh huh yeah oh but, uh, yeah you see them if they come off a plane like and it's literally like a herd of sheep i'd hurt to say i don't like that in metaphor as a rule but it, there's nothing else that comes to mind so much as that you know and they're wondering where will i go where will i go where will i go you know but but this guy i didn't wasn't taking any notice but and because i'm kind of i am half deaf literally now he had my good ear but he said something i knew and then immediately i heard of, i heard some rumbling and i might have heard the word racist in the middle of it because there's a guy and it, it was when i looked around eventually when I got a bit off the road, it was this guy. He he's one of these kind of you know middle class assholes, uh, you know. And he always when he comes meets me for the last couple of years or so, anytime I met him on the street, he said, "Oh, I hear you're a racist now, John." You know, the, mm -hmm. you know, very very. Now, in fairness, it's just a very original and funny joke, don't you think, James? Oh, well, Father Ted. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, the, oh, you mean is is that not original? I thought he made it up, James. Honestly, oh God. Anyway. <laughs> But the, the, I mean, myself, you see, I, I heard it, but I didn't react at all. And he was left, I looked around and he was kind of shuffling off down the street, like, you know, and I looked, you could see his back was treating. And I thought to myself, that's a very unusual response for me. Because normally I'd be kind of, I would look out of irritation even to hear yes. this, but I didn't. And, and I realized actually, I have finally erased any, what you might call concern concerned we are concerned you know that not kind of even it's not even a residual level of concern anymore completely not a bit not a bit uh, so it lost the spell word has completely lost its power over me they can so they're gonna to have to come up with a new one i'm sure they will you know because i've been called everything like but you know they're running out of dictionaries never mind words you know uh, mm. and uh, so I I, uh, I I was quite cheered up by that, and I think that's actually reflecting. That's something that I'm picking up, you know, to the zeitgeist or something. That that people are now fairly cool with calling them racist. Oh, go on, call on again. Come on, call me racist again now. Come on, racist. Come on, say it again. You can, you can. Uh, yeah. That's the way to talk to them. Uh, you have any more? Any more xenophobe? Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, homophobe. Grand. Yeah. 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 Okay. Misogynist. Yes. Of course. Yeah. 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 What else? You know, come on, come on, while you're at it, get it all out, you know. But people are beginning to do this, and that's the end for, for these people. It's, yeah. it, it's over then, because the spell word was an extraordinarily effective instrument for a long time. It was literally like a cattle prod that mm. people were able, were kind of herded into particular yeah. frames of thought and out of others. It's being threatened. Yeah, yeah, John, it's been so misused and overused. And of course, naturally what happens, just like a product cycle, uh, you just actually, people become desensitized to it then, you know, over time. And yeah, well, also, they, 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 we have managed to get out the analysis of it, like that, uh, wh how ridiculous it is. That it is an importation from entirely alien lands and circumstances. So it has nothing to do with our culture at all. And just stupid people trying to, and, and malevolent people 
trying to you know, impose it on us for whatever mixture of reasons. And uh, people now are beginning to see through that and to see through the other things. Oh, well, the Irish went all over the place. You know, I say, yeah, OK, well, you know, yeah, they, 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 did they get runners and, and, and genes as well when they arrived? Like, I don't I didn't remember reading that in the history book, you know, like, you know, where they put up in the in the, the five star hotels like in New York when they arrived. Yeah, I don't think so. You know, like all this kind of stuff, the nonsense and the, the, the well, it's not just nonsense. It's, it's just malevolent, sleazy rubbish, you know, and uh, but people are now beginning to get sick of it and to understand, listen, we know who you are. We know why you're doing this. You're on the payroll. You know, this is why you're doing it, you know, and and uh, that's a good thing. I mean, I think that people really need to move on then to the next frame, which is to see, yeah. stand back a bit and look at actually what's happening to their country. Like, because I, I really do believe, James, that, you know, there are no really accurate figures when you see consider certain questions like, I mean, you, you know, how many actual authentic Irish people are in that five point whatever one five million? If that's you know, even accurate, you know, can you tell that? You know, because there's so many variables, so many unknowns, isn't it? Like how many, how many people came in? How many Irish people left? How many children of the children born are actually real Irish children, and how many aren't? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, James. And and you know, when you apply a, a, a kind of an anecdotal or a, a, you know your own personal test, you come up with something similar to this. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was something like that only about three odd million of the population is now authentically Irish. Yeah, and you know what? what has very to get small, in... and a very small three point, maybe 3.23, nothing much more. And they could be uh, interracial marriages as well. So even that's not, you know, we'd yeah. say, you know, Irish, Irish, it could be, you yeah, know, so a different mother or father, you know, but what, what I like to really mention that, absolutely, John, I mean, where do you get these stats? Let's just say, I mean, the C, the, uh, the CSO was semi-reputable anyway, we believe anyway, throughout the COVID scam. They seem to be, strangely enough, printing accurate figures that were going against, obviously, the corporate media, the Mockingbird media's narrative. In so that's today, what we think. I think they're, they're, they're modifying that. It's okay. not so good now, I don't think. Uh, right. I could be wrong with it, but I don't get the impression that it, it's as strong now. I mean, and they're certainly not strong on the migration thing. They are trying assiduously to, to conceal the truth about migration. This is part of the agenda. Uh, because really, when you consider that, I mean, I did a, I came across a survey uh, there about four or five years ago, and I wrote about it, like that in between the years 2011 and, to, and 2019, uh, there, an average of 125,000 Irish people left Ireland every year wow yeah uh and in the same year something like a hundred and five thousand outsiders came in now if that's not replacement i don't know what it's called mm. so you just make that up like that's like nine years or whatever it is uh and that's a million odd a year that's 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 a hundred thousand a year that's a million people in 10 years gone and another million in that's replacement. So, you see, so so like the, the, there was an interesting figure in the CSO, uh, the, the census for Dublin, that of the greater Dublin area now, it's 35% are non-Irish. Uh, that's a hell of a figure. But I don't even think that that's realistic because, of course, so many of these people aren't going to fill out census forms. Why would they? Like they're hardly a gog to kind of you know get their names down and, and send them into the government. Like they don't even probably most of them probably don't even know it's there. I mean, if you're living in a, in a house with seventeen Brazilians, the chances of everybody filling out the census are pretty slim. So, you know, yeah. But even if they do fill it out, you know, is it going to be filled out honestly? What I really yeah. think works in that, I think you know, to to boil it down really to this aphorism, John. That what we need to say and, and repeat as well, because a lot of people are conditioned there, they they get these. I think it's it's mass deportation of illegals. That really has to that has to be framed into people's mind. It has to you well, know, the, get the, the entire, the cortex. The entire yeah. thing is fraudulent, James. Yeah. You know, they, they told us back in, in, in 2004 that 10,000 people would come in from Eastern Europe when the when the wall came, when the, 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 the European borders were opened. You know, that's, that's a joke. Uh, 
everything they've told us since then has been similarly lies, lies, lies. And they're continuing to lie every day. And it is quite clear that what is in train is uh, a program of replacement. Now, you know, whether that's the intention of every person in the Irish government or not is either here or there. Uh, that that's what's in train and the people behind it know that that's what's in train. And ultimately it will succeed unless or less or less. Uh, but, you know, we're running out of unlesses because, you know, the, the day will come when uh, Paddy will no longer be the boss in his own country. If he is even that and now, I mean, that's another discussion, you know, in a, under a different heading. But, uh, you know, so I, I don't know, like, you see, one of the things is that the, this thing has went, gone behind a veil for the last uh, 10 years. There used to be reasonable commentary and discussion of it. Like I, I came across a lot of what I was researching it recently. I came across a lot of news stories from the early noughties talking about scammers and, 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 you know, all of these, you know, the, the, the people trafficking, all these stories were being run, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, children, children going missing, like, and so on and so on, all this life has been covered journalistically, like journalism still existed, James, shocking, shocking, shocking. But since about 2011, the year of the auto hall pay that I've talked about also, the, the self coup, the, that has all gone away. And, and it is now racism, racism, racism. That's the, t that's the story. That's the only story in town. And behind that veil, this has been accelerated, ramped up exponentially, particularly since 2015. So, you know, I mean, and, and, and especially in the last two years, like the, 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 grade, the graph is now pointing vertically up into the air, you know, in terms of the kind of uh, the, the, um, the level, the numbers are, that are coming in. So, uh, you know, you see, this is an extraordinary thing that people are afraid to talk about something that, again, like that girl, if you reverse that, you can see very clearly that it's an appalling thing. I can see it's an appalling thing, but there's a certain quarterly out there who would even consider mentioning it a racist function and a racist act. And, and in the same way that if you talk about the numbers of what's going on in your country, even though the con what has happened to your own people is worse than is happening to any of the people who are coming here claiming asylum. Well, John, we know that that's utterly ridiculous as well. And we're not going to acquiesce any to any stupidity. I have really a saying, I know, I know, never, but, you, know, I you know, never argue point, with... Yeah. My yeah. point is to try to communicate to people how they can free themselves from all of these complexes and, 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 and bad attitudes because they're actually fatal. Yeah. You know, they're fatal to Ireland. They're fatal to the Irish people. They're fatal to the Irish homeland. Very soon, we won't have the opportunity to claw it back. I hope we still have, but it's touch and go. And, and we really need to turn on these, these creeps and tell them to get stuffed. The Vrad creeps and the Ryan creeps and the Martin creeps, you know, like I was thinking there the other day, uh, you know, because we've touched on this before, but I, I, you know, I was looking back at the four years nearly now that we've gone through all this awfulness. And it just struck me that for me, that that period is like a single thing. And it's a very intense, very ugly, very nasty thing. The, the atmosphere in it, the feel of it, the, the, this, the taste of it. It's, it's absolutely obnoxious. Uh, but it just struck me, actually, that why? Why is that? Because, you know, and I was trying to think, you know, we have said this before, but it, I think now it came to me very clearly. And this, this you might see is a metaphor, but it's not, as it were, that much of a metaphor. It's, it's almost literally true. That actually Ireland has been occupied for the last four years. That's the feeling I have. Yeah. And all of this is part of that occupation. Like, you know, now when I say it's a metaphor, you know, people say, well, it's not true. Well, that's not the case. It's an Irish government. Oh, yeah. Isn't it yeah. just, you know, yeah. like these guys, like if you look at, at Varadkar, somebody said to me recently, like that he, he has the look now of Mussolini and he has, he has that swagger and that smirk, that sneer. And, 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 you know, he's putting on a bit of beef on the chops you know and it's probably the binge eating you know because he's the stress is getting to him you know but he is the lead 
kind of sellout merchant. He's a really extraordinary figure and people have no idea. They think of him as this kind of random figure who just happened to climb up to the ranks. No, 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 no. This guy was placed here to do exactly this. 100% planted in there, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and he has no affection whatever for Ireland. In fact, he has a pure hatred in his heart for the Irish people and you can see it now. Anytime you look at, say, when he looks at Ben Scallon, you can see that visceral hatred in his face. Yeah. He, in other situations, he's somewhat good at concealing it, but it comes out there. And so, like, this is an occupation. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and Thomas Sheridan has said that, I think he, he talked about, you know, Radker being like a, a viceroy or something like that. that he, yeah. Delivering the messages to the, to, the, to the plebs, you know, to the proles. And, and, uh, and that's kind of what it is. And, and yeah. do you know, and to add to that, he, kid, he considers himself this high level plenipotentiary as well. When he leaves Ireland, you know, he can make all these decisions, you know, on behalf of Ireland and just talk so freely. I, it reminds me back to the time of this with the lockdown with the spoof 19. He was at, he was at his most level of glee and gusto. I mean, drunk with this uh, level of power that he had. When he came out and mentioned, he said, oh, well, the airports mightn't ever open up. Are these lockdowns? Well, we might never come out of lockdown. He was clearly reveling in that. But, you know, I think we need to get a bit less. I, a lot of people are fixated on him. And I think, you know, Racker, someone like uh, the, the Dandy Gandhi is there because he infuriates people. Absolutely. Now, I think if that happens for too long, people get a little bit demoralized and they think, what can we do? And this guy's got some, you know, he's an omnipotent presence, you know, here in Ireland and he's he got so much power. I think, you know, the more sort of he gets ignored and the less relayed a lot of his comments are and his snipes at the Irish, I think, you know, he has to be ignored more often. I think oh, he's, well, I mean, it's easy. He's, relevant. He's, he's kind of easy to ignore, but, the, yeah. you know, it's, it's not really about power in that sense. He has no power except what he is given by the combine, yeah. by the overlords, by the, the whatever you would call them. Sure, he's a mid manager, yeah. Yeah, he, he, and, and when you say he, he is like, uh, you know, going over, say, to Davos, he doesn't speak in Davos like as if he is the, the Prime Minister, the Taoiseach of Ireland. He goes as if he is the subduer of Ireland. And he yeah. reports on the sub, uh, you know, you know, subjugation of the Irish people. That's, that's the deal. It's not a question of, well, how is Ireland doing? It's a question of how is Ireland being done, right? Yeah. And and he's in the same of the, cut from the same cloth as as uh, Tordo and and uh, the other gobshite in France and you know the same kind of you know uh, youthful you know middle aged whatever the hell you would call it uh, but obnoxious beyond belief people you know and and uh, you know it is extraordinary like it's it's the most heartbreaking thing about this that 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 we were so inattentive. To, to our precious institutions and we let such people even into them you know like you know it's it's just beyond belief that we allow that to happen uh, and and it's not just him like i mean you, you just think back like i mean you, you know i think if you go back and i was writing about this there during the week and go to i i would have to say that the rock set in with bertie bertie Hearn, you know that that really you know he was not a suitable person to become Taoiseach under any circumstances I think up to that point, you could say, generally speaking, that the figures right up to Hawhey and, and Fitzgerald and even John Bruton, maybe, you know, maybe touch and go. Uh, but certainly Bertie was a, a bridge too far. And then you got into Indy King and it just became a farce, you know, and then it became inevitable that this creep would end up there because he was the next, it was this creep's turn, you know. So, uh, but, but you see, now we're in this terrible situation that, um, they have bought off all the media. They control all the judiciary. The judiciary are just little puppets now doing what they're told. Uh, you know, detect, you know pu pushing cases up the line so that they will be able to, to, to issue judgments that will be able to be used in the campaign for the referendum. That's what's going on. And delivering to order or the, the judgment that is required by the government and so on. And, and uh, all of this is going on. But fundamentally we are here in this extraordinary situation that we 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 are literally like like almost like driving a car without ring wing mirrors 
and without a back window or side windows, and maybe a tiny hole in the in the windscreen. The windscreen is broken, and you can see how. And you're trying to drive a car with this a hole maybe about an inch and a half in diameter. That's what without a media. That's what it is like to be in a democracy uh, when you have no media. It, it, it's equivalent to that. You have no idea what's around you. You have no idea what's happening. You have no idea what's coming at you. You just get, you just, you're just guessing all the time. And and of course, it's much worse if you actually read the media and absorb what it says, because then you're an entirely different car driving, you know, in, in some, uh, you know, uh, artificially created uh, reality, you know, some virtual reality, which has nothing to do with anything. And uh, so this is, this is like, I, I find it extraordinary. I, 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 I had obviously when I was in, in journalism, I knew lots of people who were, you know, it strikes me, you know, that all of the people around me were in a certain sense more liberal than me by definition almost for the recent past anyway, the last 20, 30 years. Up to that, not so much, but uh, I began to kind of realized that there was something seriously going wrong in, in different under different headings and I, I started to edge into the center and then slightly a little bit to the right you know and then what what I'm absolutely gobsmacked at the way that you know because when we took my seventh general already took our case in, in April 2020 I really thought I will do this because everybody else will be doing it anyway and I won't have to stick my head up, you know, too high, you know? I honestly thought that, James. I thought, I thought we'd be killed in the rush down the four courts. We'd be trampled to death by all the liberals saying, you can't do this, you can't do this. And we arrived down there and there was no one there except us. Unbelievable. And, and I couldn't, I honestly couldn't believe it, James, because I, I'll tell you why, because I actually listened to all these guys and thought they were sincere when they talked about liberty and truth and decency and honor and equality and all these things, I actually took them literally. I thought they meant it. And then that's the one good thing about the whole thing is that actually we got to see the reality of these guys. And now, my goodness, like, you know, I, I, the, the scales fell from my eyes and I saw all these guys as being just, you know, like I, I meet some of them now and I mean, it's quite surreal, James, you know, that you, you, you run into somebody in the street and, and they act as if the, the deadline is like uh, 2004, maybe, maybe even 2001. And they start talking about something that is completely irrelevant. And I kind of say, God, am I, what, you, what, 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 what year is it, you know? And, and, and uh, you know, you start a conversation about the country and they're talking about things that have no significance whatsoever now. You know, John, I think, on some, I, I think on some level that's actually a cope. I think they're actually coping what's going on. Call it like a form of escapism. Uh, do you know what? Find that that's really how they, you know, they get their bearings because they really have no idea what's going on. And, you know, is the interest to go out there and find out. And the reason why you mention that is the idea of, look, it, we know the definition of insanity, John is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So you have people that know that these are liars, pathological liars, with, as you said, industrial level lies on a daily basis. But they keep on going back to the likes of the rats in RT or the slimes. So that's, that's I, I'm having less and less sympathy for people like that because ultimately what you do there, you know, is you look for an alternative. There should be an instinct. Certainly the motivation is there. And as we know, with alternative media it's often known as alt media there's so much there there's really so much there you know that people can access they can get verifiable information and they're getting the truth which is universal and they're yep. getting you know a lot of fantastic individuals that aren't being paid huge sums of money to lie to people that's, a lot of that's, them actually doing it down to decent that's very true that's very true i mean these guys i i figured out like that you see it's a bit like because I, when I was out there, you know, and, and generally speaking, I think you could trust the media to tell you more or less what happened yesterday and what was the truth today, right? That was kind of, in general, not always, but and not under certain headings, maybe at all in certain circumstances, but in general. And so that you could actually conduct a manageable kind of 
apprehension of reality by just wandering around the place talking to people and having chats and joke on the stairs in the newspaper in the Irish Times as it did was uh, and, 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 and all that kind of stuff and, and, and so you didn't you know it was kind of an inexact science but you kind of everybody was more or less agreed with what was going on and there was no sense of cognitive dissonance so much in, as there is now but, but now it, that's all gone and, and the thing is these people are still in there you see and they're still checking it out with each other and they're getting the same answers and the same results as they got back then. But of course, they're all being misinformed by the same sources. And you see, but the other thing is that, that, that the alternative media, I agree with you. And I mean, it's really come on in leaps and bounds in the last four years. It's, it's formidable now. And, and but it's it, what interests me about it is that it's an entirely different way of dealing with reality. You know, it's not like you know, it's like, you know, the, the old media is the, 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 the set aside media, as I call it, it, you know, that kind of format, the old, even when it was good, it was still like getting your meals at set times, you know, uh, like you were in a hospital or something like, and you get the, you know, uh, six o'clock news, here it comes, here comes Brian Dobson with the dinner, you know, and, and, and so on, the breakfast and the, the lunch and all that. Uh, but you see, with, with um, the alt, alt media is completely a la carte. You, you are your own editor, you are your own kind of, you know, you go and you decide what you're going to watch. And you, so it takes you a long time to learn how to, to do it, you know, to, how, to, how to, to find out what's really happening. And because you have to kind of, you know, rather than having one source, you have to have multiplicity of sources and in a certain sense, sift between them, you know, check if, who's saying what and, and in the contradictions and the disagreements. And out of that, you kind of formulate an, a, a running sense of what's going on, which is quite different to the to the the old media because the old media was basically telling you this is blah 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 war, plane crash, blah blah, blah World Cup, whatever it would be, and that's it. Whereas this way, it's a kind of a, a complete like a, an avalanche of a snowball, a snowball rolling down a hill. You're accumulating as you go, and you're gathering all this new information and. And, and I don't think you see that the vast majority of people out there are ready for that yet. I mean, the idea makes them dizzy because they don't understand it. They've never tried it. And it sounds formidable. If you try to describe it to somebody, they kind of look at you and like, oh, you know, where would you start? And that's a good question, but you do need to start. You start by starting. You just go and you look at something and then you look at something else and they might be terrible. Uh, but then you look at something else and eventually within a day or two you'll find something interesting and you'll watch that and then you'll watch the next thing they do or he does and whatever and so on and that's the way you build as i say this the the, the dry stone wall of your understanding of reality and uh, i that's that's a whole new world that's like the network society that's kind of that's the end of the press and i think we are seeing the end and it's a great thing you know because uh, people have that kind of reflex notion that, oh, well, you know, we need our press, you know, for democracy. No, no, we don't. <laughs> That's the last thing we need. The last thing that Irish democracy needs now is the Irish crimes. You know, that, that's just an idea. People really have to get to that, understand that the Irish Times is actively d damaging now and dangerous within Irish, Irish democracy because it is telling lies all the time. They, that's it's just like that, of course. And you know, like as day broadcaster, what I was there to be before is, um, you know, you even came, came over in your wonderful book, Give Us Back the Bad Roads. You have a chapter, and I thought that was excellent. That you know, the media is supposed to be a conduit for divergent views, you know, it's supposed to be non partisan. You're supposed to have on you, you can have experts, one has an opposing view, and they talk it out. They're not activists for corporations, the information yeah. is out there for the person, then. You know, they glean from what they've came across so that they can have conversations and then yeah. go on to actually, you know, check it out themselves. So you read, you reread, you cross-reference, you know, you, see, you study up it's yourself. Very, it's very interesting. Uh, James Dellingpole had a very good article in Substack this week about the media and about journalism, about how journalism is a self-policing kind of culture, you know, and that people look for it to repro approval to one another, you know. And, you know, I remember that actually, you know, there's a kind of a thing when you write something and they start praising it highly in, in the paper. 
you should know. Of course, you're you're fucked up with pride and blah, blah, blah. Oh yes, thanks very much. Yes, very much. very good piece. Very good piece, George. Yes, just warning you. Yes, well, you know, and, and, but of course, you should be immediately suspicious when people start doing that to you in a newspaper like that now, because that means your own message. That, that's all it means. It's your own message, and 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 that's all of this stuff. You know, like when I went to the Irish Times first in 1990, the editor then was Conor Brady, and. He, I came from alternative uh, journalism, from, from Hot Press in Dublin, uh, of which I was the editor, and Miguel, of which I was the editor. And I, I, a couple of years later, I joined the Irish Times. And they kind of, you know, headhunted me or whatever, you know. And the idea, Conor Brady said to me at the time, now he says, you know, when we want, I want you to be what you were in Hot Press and in Dublin and Miguel. He said, I don't want you coming in and being like all these other drones around here, you know? And, and uh, I said, yeah, okay. Uh, but you see, as soon as I actually did that, the sky, the sky fell in. You know, I wrote a story about, I wrote a series of articles which she commissioned for me uh, about Midland Towns. And I went down and spent time and I did a hatchet job in Longford and Port Leash. And, and Tullamore, which is his hometown, God help us. And, and of course, they, they, they were all oh, hell broke loose. And, and uh, uh, there were meetings of county councils. And, and, and this live line had a special sitting, I think. Uh, 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 and and uh, uh, that kind of put an end to the idea. But what I noticed immediately about my colleagues, that whatever notion the editor had about bringing in different voices, and that was genuinely his ethic. He wanted to create a multiplicity of voices in the paper, you know. But the thing was that all the journalists who were working there already, their objective was to get everybody else on the same. The Singing off the hymn sheet. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And 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 uh, and so that they were policing each other and policing, trying to police me into, you know, just doing like so when I would write an article that was anti the European Union, for example, uh, and start talking about bureau bullies and all that. I would get a very frigid, uh, very chilly reception uh, in the morning when I would arrive in, you know, uh, and that kind of thing, you know, and not that it bothered me that much because I thought, and I and I, and I did have the editor had my back on that basis, and and you know he was he was a pretty good editor actually in lots of ways, uh, and I went on, and then it was only later when when in in about 20 in 2012 13 14 that started to fall apart when they brought in a complete dope as editor called uh, kevin o'sullivan and he of course had no authority whatsoever in the paper and everybody was doing their own thing and the next thing i realized that that there were actually gangs on twitter assassinating my character every night and that the editor was quite happy with this uh, so that had that changed, you see, that the whole nature of journalism changed fundamentally as a result of Twitter. And uh, that has a fundamental, you know, consequences for our democracies, because, you know, you need those conventions, you need those kind of rules, those protocols whereby, you know, even though we have certain views of ourselves, we have a duty to, to the truth and to be up as far as possible neutral in the way we treat news stories and you know, and be open and honest about our opinions when they're op opinions and so on. And and that stuff was all being kind of thrown, uh, literally thrown out in the skip, you know. And uh, that's kind of where we are now. We don't have journalism. And these guys are posturing as journalists when, in fact, they're something like the antithesis, whatever you might decide that is. I would say, I call them journal liars, but, uh, you know, it's... it's, it's Clearly, much... yeah. Imposters, yeah, impersonating journalists, but they are, of course, you know what they're called, John. You've called them. They're journal lawyers, is what yeah. they are. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, look, and and Twitter, like, is a cesspool. I mean, it's such a swamp because it there's a gravitational pull for these cowardly rats, people that are so pusillanimous that they're not actually going to show their face or their name, and they can attack me. Yeah. And you know what? This, this popped into my head, John, is that it's it's similar to if you can imagine a shopping center, okay? And there's some gentleman, he's he's walking, he's walking down, right? And it's it's a busy shopping center, and somebody's in some little AV room, and they've got access to the intercom, and they have also video fo video footage of this gentleman, and it's like they're saying the guy with the blue jacket is a big idiot or something, and he feels that he's been identified, but you know, that he's been insulted by the intercom. And he's just going, you know, come out, show me who's yeah. speaking this. But they won't, because they're so 
spineless jellyfish. It's so, I mean, these rep these these reprobates and miscreants, they're just it's packed out onto the Twitter swamp. Yeah, I get I get quite a lot of people the, the last while now getting onto me and say, "Oh, you have to be on Twitter, John. You know, it's changed completely." You know, and and I said, "Well, I don't know." I said, "Maybe it has, but I I don't want to be on it because, apart from anything else, I've said too many pretty harsh things about Twitter, uh, to be going on now quietly." You know, I mean, I I said that, you know, I've said many times, James, that you know when Western civilization finally collapses, or collapses imminently actually uh, and then a short time afterwards maybe 10 or 15 or 20 years you know a bunch of anthropologists go into the ruins to see well what what happened you know what's what went wrong and and uh, you know they they will be asked come out and with your explanation you know and, uh, and they will go and they will come out you go around with your own for a while and then they will come out with a sheet of paper on uh, with the cause of this uh, calamity that occurred in uh, 2025 say uh, and and uh, the, that word will be Twitter. There will be one word on the page, and that word will be Twitter, uh, because that is the you know the anonymity, the capacity to to assassinate people's characters without revealing who you are, is an abomination in any democracy. You can't run a democracy like that. And this is people go on about the sacred anonymity. No, there's nothing sacred about anonymity. No. If you go like anybody who ever attacked me, they knew who they were attacking. You see, they had my name. They knew what I looked like. They can do it in the paper, they could do it in the, on TV, on radio, they could do it on Twitter, they could do it to my face in the street, and they did. Your enemy is defined, exactly. You can say, okay, it's this person. You know, they yeah. can use different mediums there to attack you, but you yeah. can you can retort. You There's an option for a rebuttal. Yeah, yeah. and and, and but you need to know, I mean, like, you know, you wouldn't regard it as very democratic, like if you were speaking at a public meeting and you're up there and you could be assassinated or whatever, and then somebody shouts an obs load of obscenities from the back and walks out and nobody knows who it is. Like, yeah. you, you know, there, you, 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 like a democracy requires a name and a face, you know, I mean, that, that's the way it is. I mean, and people get that mixed up with kind of the biometric IDs and all that kind of stuff. That's a, that's a nonsensical comparison. This, this is a, a really important thing. There's no shouting anonymously abuse is not democracy. Yeah. You and, know, and, and it always yeah, it always sticks with me. I had a wonderful guest there, well known, like in across the world, Max Egan there from the Crow House. It's not just a name drop, but I've said it on a few streams, and it's amazing how these just simple statements just stick with you. And he said, Well, he said, James, really the idea is social media is they to give everybody a voice. Because when you give everybody a voice, no one listens anymore. I thought, bang. He's on to something massive there. You know, everybody, they're not interested. They're on about clicks and likes and shares, but they're not actually analyzing the information. Oh, yeah. I, 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 that's important or not. I, yeah. Obviously, because I'm not on it, I don't follow it. But but I have one or two people who, you know, occasionally tell me stuff about or send me tweets and I you know, look at them. And there's a particular individual <clears throat> that I used to work with. And <clears throat> I've been watching them very carefully, like, you know, He's, he, he actually says utterly idiotic things all the time, right? Now, he's an idiot. I'm not taking that from him. But <laughs> he, he's not that big of an idiot. And I suspect that he, he is what he's doing. He's winding people up and that in some way, and I'm not sure how this works, but I'm sure he's making money out of it one way or another. You know, I'm pretty sure he's been taking money for the last four years because he's been pro-COVID all the way along, pro-vaccine, pro all that. Uh, and and the, the, all, there's a lot of that going on that nobody knows about. It's another factor like that. These yeah. people are paid. There's all these phenomena like bots and so on who have been, yeah. you know, run by creeps like Brad Creep. You know, I mean, he confessed it there way back years ago. That, that you Yeah, know, he was talking about buying, buying an army so to, to use it, you know, to utilize a lot of these bots to yeah. sort of convey uh, the message out to people that they're more popular, uh, that their opinions are more popular than they actually are. So, which is, of course, subterfuge again, and he's openly yeah. admitting it. I mean, they're they are I, alarm bells, yeah. I, and where this becomes acutely dangerous, James, is in the way that it tilts entire societies in a particular way. And one of the things that it has done in, in the last few years, in the last, I mean, how long has Twitter gone? 15 years now, something like that? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, in that 15 years, something has crept into Western society, which previously would have been thought impossible. And that's a phenomenon called, uh, it's called repressive tolerance. And it was, it's a concept. Marcuse. Marcuse, yeah. And, and the idea is that 
approximately the idea is it's a complex idea but the idea is that you know if you are quote unquote a fascist in other words if you have reprehensible views then you are not entitled to free speech or any other of the benefits of democracy and anybody can say anything they like about you and in fact so that tends then towards the total demonization of people who are deemed to be outside the pale of democratic protection let us say Mm. Uh, you know that it is. You know, it's, it's it's actually intolerant to be tolerant of people yeah. who are you know have wrong views. And and of course, it, who decides what the wrong, who what's right and wrong? Well, you do. You know, well, they say truth is decided by the powerful, absolutely, and it yeah, it encourages it. other people then to ostracize these people yeah. when they have been branded judge, jury, and executioner by yeah. this ex business. And yeah. this is this is why I'm always warning people, James, not to get complacent. At the idea that when they hear journal journaliers repeating this thing about far right, far right, far right, and you just think this is hilarious, this is just ridiculous, yeah. you know, no, no, be careful. This is if this is how uh, repressive tolerance works. This is how the concept works. If you keep repeating it, you drum that idea into people's heads, and they wake up one day and think, oh, the problem is X. He's the problem because he's wrong like trump you know they're doing it to trump you can see it the way that, that they, they they talk about you know trump derangement syndrome well that's a symptom of that whole phenomenon whereby somebody is so outside the pale that whereas some people will support him and love him uh, others will be convinced that he is the devil himself mm. and 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 th that that means they can do anything they can you know yeah. take spurious court actions against them they can yeah, drive them them. Off, yeah. put, put them I off the, the, the electoral ticket the, the voting paper mm -hmm. and so on uh, that that you know like you just have to look at that and say well like in a democracy in the kind of democracy that america was say 20 25 years ago that would immediately be, end up in the supreme court within hours yeah. and the people responsible would be in jail not trump mm. Because they would have been regarded as having made an attempt, an attack on the most fundamental, precious uh, uh, principles of democracy, mm. and they would be regarded as as really dangerous subversives. Mm. But now yeah. they're respectable uh, DPPs, the prosecution authorities, and and uh, judges, and so on, uh, and and they're they're kind of getting away with it. Uh, yeah, well, of course. Yeah, John, you know, we're talking slander, defamation. And as we know, you know, freedom, uh, like free speech comes before, you know, freedom, not not after it. And of course, we, we know here in Ireland with our wonderful, our amazing history, we know that men and, and some women as well, they died for, for the freedom that we have today. So I think that's actually a very valid point, what you're touching on there, John, because it is really, obviously, it's a slippery slope and that becomes the norm. And I know what you're saying with this level of repetition that's out there, there's so much rubbish. But what I tell to people there is actually get activated. Instead of giving some insouciant shrug and saying, yeah, sure, this is the way it is, get activated and say, no, I disagree. You know, that that's wrong and actually mentioned to someone and yeah. get them to get activated and say, Do you know what? I've been thinking the same thing, but you know, it might be because I think that this, you know, this, 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 it's become latent. It's become latent within people to actually speak out. That's exactly what they want as well, John. Yeah. They want to keep I, their mouths. Yeah. And you see, the other concept now that they're constructing very carefully in the middle of every society is the concept of disinformation, yeah. which is yeah. basically you know can be translated as you know questioning the government opposing the government because the government is always speaking the truth is it not and therefore mm -hmm. anybody who says anything different is issuing disinformation that's the general theory of this and you have a supreme court judge on a panel in relation to this about the, the elections and she's telling people you know she'll be telling people what's true and what's not true yeah. uh, the idea that that the that the public conversation is a clearinghouse for ideas and that it's a, it's a marketplace in which there is an exchange of, of different viewpoints and different uh, perspe perspectives and different ways of putting things and different ways of seeing things. That is now kaput. Uh, we're not allowed to think like that. No, the, the word will come down. This is the official line. This is the truth according to, you know, uh, you know, some, some so-called doctor or some called so-called scientist or the 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 Taoiseach or the Tarnish the, and that will be the end of it. Uh, you know, um, Luke O'Neill will tell us 
what's happening to our health. And our experience will be, if it's different to that, will be disinformation. Well, that already happened as well. We know, John, with, with Spoof 19, of course, that's the word saying. There was no there was no nuance. There wasn't a debate. It was, of course, it was monomaniacal. OK, so they just fixated on something. And of course, then what they do is they make it melodramatic. So the people that supported and virtue signal on behalf of these venal and avaricious boffins are extremely brilliant. Now, anybody that's thinking all these this whole thing like inalienable and imprescriptible rights and, you know, quoting the Constitution, that is absolutely bizarre. And they need to be put back in their box. They need to put that slave muzzle back on and, and wait for the, the next uh, headlines there for Dr. Death to be rolled out for the, the nightly pass grenade. Like. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I, I think now, uh, the, the, you know, we must now, if there was a we, I mean, in a certain sense, when we talk about a we, we're, we're, we're you and I talking here, uh, James, we're, we're talking about a particular group, which is the, the dissidents, the resistance, right? And that we knows pretty much, you know, we don't agree about everything, but we have a general sense of the same sets of ideas and, and, and facts. Uh, and, and, but that is not shared out there in the culture because the, the rest of the culture is, is a pseudo reality, which is, you know, constructed on a daily basis by paid liars, journal liars. And, and therefore, you know, there's a very strange kind of uh, sense of truth because in effect, in actual fact, you, you know, disinformation is actually the truth when, when you see it in that way. It's, it's an approximation of the truth. It may not, as I say, for all the reasons I've said, it may be slightly, you know, ed, uh, rough at the edges. And, and there may be certain kind of stripes in it, or, you know, different of opinion and so on. But in general, what they are trying to stamp out is the truth. We've got to, we've got to understand that. 100%. And what, yeah. The, and the, of course, it's done the, the, the hate speech law is not a hate speech law. It's a truth law. It's an anti-truth law. It's, it's, it's a law that is, seeks to yeah. elevate lies and, and silence people who try to speak the truth. So like we were speaking earlier about mass migration. We were speaking about that girl who was, that poor girl who was being, you know, came home in tears from school. You know, that possibly would amount to hate speech. In, if somebody uh, decided to make a complaint against the two of us for, for, for speaking about that and, and that she felt distressed uh, because she felt that she was being blamed, that there was a finger being pointed at, or whatever, you know. Or uh, even someone someone on her behalf as well. But that's what happens, of course, pushing in towards a totalitarian state. But that's, as you mentioned, repressive tolerance. We've talked so many times about cultural Marxism, and you have so eloquently, actually, in your book, Give Us Back the Bad Roads, I mentioned. Now, I'm going to also mention your website as well, uh, just to the viewers, some people that are jumping on the stream uh, that might only be coming across here for the first time. But, you know, this is the idea of the PC narrative, as you say, lockjaw, you know, mutism. It's to kill any spontaneity. Now, what happens there is that kills, I mean, we're, we're Irish. I mean, we're known for our community communication skills. We've also talked as well that the language communication skills are getting more perfunctory. You know, there's less confidence. There's there's less of this, the laughing and joking. And of course, this is the banter. This is all, these are all uh, yeah. elements you know, of developing, you know, your, your intellectual, your communicational prowess, really. You know, the laughing and joking well, and your quick remarks and, 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 and of course your mind as well as moving and in a lot of different directions and you're picking up on, you know, a, a multitude of different aspects. And of course, then you articulate your point and this is real, a hive of activity, maybe in a pub or a community call. And, and that's the idea is to stagnate all of that energy, John. Yeah, well, it's very interesting because, you know, five years ago, I got a, a, an attack a viral, I think, you know, attacks. There was a lot of disagreement about what it was. But anyway, it left me deaf and basically numb on the left side of my face and affected my speech, my, my, in my mouth, my eye, and, um, you know, my balance. But it, it strikes me now that it is a kind of a metaphor for what's happened to the, to the that it is, I was struck by whatever it was, a blow of some kind. And in the same way, there's been a series of blows delivered to this to the to the to the head as it were of the Irish people uh, you know in the the main one was in in 2014 15 when the LGBT goons were had the run of the country and they basically terrified everybody 
uh, in a way that they would be afraid to even to speak about things that concern them about the what was at play. They, they attempt to destroy marriage, destroy family, and destroy uh, 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 parenthood, the definitions, the constitutional definitions. <clears throat> and essentially, people were terrified to even think things that might be even two steps removed from gay. And, and as a result, it, that became like almost like a chronic condition because it then started to, to leach into everything else. And, 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 and you know, like race and, and, and all kinds of stuff that, that you know, tr climate even and trans and all this. And, and the result is now that you go around. And I mean, I've been talking to friends of mine, like, down, you know, we, I come from, uh, you know, West Roscommon and, and uh, I know Sligo and Mayo and Galway intimately over my youth and, and early years. And like the people there, like, are the most garrulous people on earth or were, you know, and, and they would talk about anything and they would, you know, get into like fantastical kind of, you know, dialogues and in the pub or wherever. And, and now it's all gone. There's everybody's looking around them like who's listening, you know, and uh, uh, and uh, oh God, no, you can't talk about that. Oh God, no, oh God, no, you know, oh, look, no, no, say that, no, <laughs> like, oh, you know yourself now, <laughs> you know, like, this is a terrible thing when you, if, if people only knew what these creeps have done to us, if they could only just see it, they would, they would run them out of town. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's abominable. It's you know, I feel, yeah, it is, John, but I feel sorry as well for a lot of those people because, you know, I don't live my life that way and I'm sure I know that you don't as well. So, you, you know, you have, there is still a market, if you like to put it that way, you know, for speaking the truth. And, you know, ridicule is man's most potent weapon. You, you mention it that way. Also, another thing to pick up on what was earlier with all this idea about people with the ad hominem attacks and it's getting boring with the racist transphobe and stuff like that. But the best form of defense is attack there. And you have an incredible amount of subject matter. And you'll find a lot of these people are cowardly and they only look for a bit of traction online. Generally speaking, in real life, those people don't really exist. And here's a massive thing is because this cowardly behavior, they've conditioned themselves to be this way because they're doing it online under a veil of anonymity. Now, do you think that person then can just shake that off and go out into a, into a pub or into a community hall and then they can speak with, with confidence and with a strident voice and say what they're saying, what they're typing online? Do you know what? No. So it's actually, it's deleterious for themselves psychologically. And that is a bonus. Now, of course, what I have here again on for the 17th time, it's Mr. John Waters on again. Now, and you can check out John there on his sub stack. It's unchained. He's up to about 10,000 people now. And we want that to grow and grow. It's absolutely fantastic. And a lot of people um, talk talk uh, about John's articles, they look to share it. You can go on, there's a section, you, you like John's articles, there's a buy John a copy, you know, click on that and that's it. Support what you what you like, what you appreciate, you know, as John says, to keep the lights on, you know, a couple yeah. of copies there and, uh, you know, you show your appreciation. Of course, there yeah. for my channel, I just have it up there. So again, I don't monetize, I don't do any channel favors. So when you're watching this uh, um, conversation, this interview now, or you're watching into the future, you're not going to be bothered by any ads or any nonsense like that absolutely share but also make sure then to support the channel not many people ever really do uh, and i just leave it up to them for the decency of someone that appreciate these conversations you can do so so paypal same thing buy a coffee or your subscribe star now just as well before i pass it over to john there's a lot of talk comments now we're up to 200 people i have 201 on my screen and there's lots of people talking about likes and there are other people saying that this isn't liked or that don't worry about any of that nonsense this channel is under the boot of censorship okay it's been trotting and shadowpan that's a given right he actually in our last stream that we had it ended up being pretty successful because it's well over 13,000 views alone on YouTube. And that was shared around. So that's into the tens of thousands on different platforms. Um, and of course, we had over 300 people watching line, live. So we're now well over 200 and that's pretty good. But, you know, the important thing is, you know, support the channel, support John. And of course, share on this material because uh, that's really what keeps uh, us going, you know, and especially really John's is a it's a heavyweight platform. Uh Thanks, James. Well, I, um, yeah, well, I, I, I was saying, I don't know if I said it to you before, but I, I have now uh, um, I've a publisher in America who is not so much a publisher, but he's a guy who produces books. So I'd be self-publishing my material from Unchained over the next year or two. 
and there's a tremendous amount of it and uh, this guy is quite incredible you know he, he like it's amazing james you know when you're used to our, you know the general kind of people that you meet in in yeah. these sectors in ireland like who are the usual kind of you know uh, uh, trendy uh, walk types and this guy is completely enthusiastic like and he's really good you know and, and he he just can't do enough and he's just delighted to be able to publish this stuff and uh, wow. So I'm I'm looking for I I think because I I really it's a thing it's a kind of a complex that I have that I've I've chronicled all this stuff for the last you know I, I didn't start until October uh, 2020 because I, I I again rather naively you know thought that this would be over by Christmas you know so and then I I, I began to sense that it wasn't going to be over and and so I started to write and I've been writing diaries and so on every week. Uh, mm -hmm. since February 2021 and I wanted you know it seems to me that, that this is kind of like you, you know it's an intimate history of this whole period from my point of view and I want to make sure that I don't shuffle off anywhere without leaving it in some kind of permanent form and that's been a real preoccupation of mine you know and now I've found this guy because uh, I mean, nobody, you know, I could. There's lots of people who could have come to me in the last three years and said, "I've been reading your diary. Or whatever. Would you like us to publish it?" You know, that doesn't happen anymore, James. It would have happened one time. You know, they would have, you know, immediately you would have got somebody saying, "Let's, you know, let's put this out." But it's taken an American to do it, and so I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, that's going to be a big project for me this year, and uh, I don't know where all this is going, James. Uh, I, I think this is going to be a heavy year. Um, mm -hmm. They are trying to start World War Three. Let's be in no doubt about that. That's because you know when you look at the mess they've created under every every possible heading. You know, look at the mess of Ireland, like look at the mess of every thing in Ireland: the health service, the roads, the, the the you know everything, the hospitals, the schools, as you say, everything is a mess. Only the, 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 given the way these people think, insofar as you can call it thinking, the only recourse is a war. Because a war will clean everything away, they think, mm. will purge everything and start everything anew. And they will be scot able to go get off scot free for all their crimes. Mm. And so I, that's my big concern, James, that, that that's coming. And, uh, mm. you know, because then they would be able to introduce all the lockdowns they want, because we have Article 28 of the Irish Constitution, which permits pretty much any all suspension of all the Constitution in the time yeah. of, of, in, of war. Uh, so that, that well, kind of. I, yeah, that would mean. So I am. I have been concerned, even though you know I, I'm getting on now, and you know my health is not as as good as it used to be. Uh, I kind of feel that I have to stay at my post for a little longer, anyway, until we get over this into whatever next phase we're going into. Uh, but uh, you know, I think we are. You know, one of the great comforts I get from all this is that the, the new force of state is emerging. You know, from yeah. people like yourself and people like Thomas and, you know, Ashley O'Loughlin and all these different voices that are there now, Louise Rosengrave, Jerry O'Neill, all these these voices from different perspectives and different styles and you know, and 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 the audience is growing, you know, as well in parallel and uh, this is so like one day we will wake up and the, the the Irish Times will be dead and 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 you know there will be an entirely effective, but entirely different. Uh, replacement. So yeah, that's a nice, nice positive replay form of replacement to talk about at the end. You know, absolutely, of course. You know, it's it's not all negative. And look, and I think Philip Dwyer is worth a good mention there as well. Now that oh, we're going in a few names, I'd, I'd feel guilty there if I if I didn't throw in Philip. You know, he's doing absolutely stellar work. But it's, you know, he's, he's incredible because he's right there at the, at the front line. He's right at the right at the at the the the, the, the cold face of the whole thing. Shoe journalism, I think they call it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's right there and he's you know he's been extraordinarily courageous and and uh, diligent and persistent and 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 also very you know he, he's an amazing capacity to be good humored even in the face of horrific attacks uh you know and he always has a, a witty remark even for the, the most obnoxious he's a, uh, he's a good old dog like you know he's your quintessential it, yeah. I mean, look, there's others, uh, of course, you know, Derek Bly, fair play. I mean, he's down in court. Look, if, if we're not, if I start to name with names, I mean, please forgive me if we're not mentioning any other names. No, you but, know? Yeah, no, no, they're, they're, but there's a lot of we people. And that's oh, that's yeah. I suppose, why I'm saying it. It's not to pick out people. It's to simply say that there are now so many that we're actually coming very close to the, to the situation of being able to claim 
the status of Port Estate. I think that's really imminent now. Uh, yeah. and, and when that happens again, like the other tipping point, which is again a negative one of the, the what I call the, the, the demographic singularity, uh, there is that moment of, you know, uh, conversational singularity. That, that It's funny that you mentioned that word just popped into my head. That is freaky because I was going to say alt media singularity when it turns yeah. out that <laughs> more people are accessing the alternative media than the corporate media. Yeah. That, that's it's mad that you actually that's said that John. just before you mentioned it. That was a bit of synchronicity. Or, uh, yes, that was serendipitous there. <laughs> yeah, it was. And, and, and that's coming, you know, and, and it's, it's almost here, you know, and I can feel it not just here, but everywhere else as well, you know, that, you know, the, the quality of, I mean, Substack is an amazing uh, uh, resource, you know, that I think even though it's, it's only one platform in a way, but it's got so many different voices and so many different, I mean, I, I mean, obviously you don't have time. There isn't enough hours in the, in the day to be able to even do any more than scratch the surface of what's there. But it's incredible, really. Uh, and when you didn't go from that reading sort of the, uh, uh, CJ Hopkins or somebody and then go and read an article and somebody sends you an article from the Irish crimes, you know, and it's just so pathetic. It's just yeah. so lazy and, and the, oh, I couldn't care less. Copy, cut and paste rubbish. You know, it's going to be the same yeah. thing on the Independent. But it must be the same thing with the Guardian over in England. Like, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's what I've been noticing recently in the odd article I see is the level of, of you can almost feel the sense of you know jadedness and, and oh do i have to do this you know and, and yeah. oh let me hear let, give me a quote from somebody i'll just put it in there you know yeah uh, yeah what did i say yeah just finish massive complacency complacency no it's not it's it, it's 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 on we it's 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 uh, uh you know jadedness it's lassitude it's it's a yeah. sense of, of it's death death james that's what it is it's yeah. death dying out you know it, you know it's very interesting the reason why i say that yeah absolutely to pinpoint that but the level i suppose of complacency i what i am touching on there is with sophistry so that's the clever use of an argument but that's now changed so it's nearly got to the stage that it's blatant lying and that's why i mentioned that way because who are they who really are they fooling now at this stage because it's it's just so i mean you'd say mediocre that sounds run of the mill i think well below par i think substandard i think in so far at the bottom of the barrel now the corporate media here in ireland that they're actually john they're scratching the rust off the end of the bottom of the barrel that's how low brow this stuff is it is, it is really pathetic <laughs> really pathetic i mean when you consider what the, the what journalism used to be like i mean in the 70s you know when you could look back and look at uh, tom wolf and the new journalism and all those guys hunter s thompson and all these amazing guys who you know were so you know colorful and and, and fantastic in their creativity you know and uh, tom wolf in particular the way he invented new new styles of journalism and now look at what's in the irish times or the guardian uh, and say, my God, like how 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 this profession has fallen. Uh, like it's yeah. it's like stuff that you know, if 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 you were teaching a, you know a journalism course for junior cert, like you, you, and you got this standard of, of stuff of work back, you'd say, listen, you know, there's no hope. There's no hope. You know. Yeah. Uh, and Thank these are. You. These are supposedly the top, the best journalists in the country. You know? We've got there, yeah, there's a chap, a content creator there. That's a big shout out to there. It's Red Pilled MMA. He's doing um, great work there, up to about 30,000 subs there. He's getting massive views there on his channel. And he did one there in relation to Conor McGregor. So he slips in a couple of the uh, social and political commentary there into his videos, which I think, uh, you know, that's worth mentioning as well. Look at John, anything to... I was going to mention, look, at in, in circumstances really hasn't changed. It is worth mentioning Enoch Burke is now still still in jail, if you can imagine. I mean, what is it even now? Is he, is he, is it, is something like that? I should, I should know, oh, I should it, like, jog my memory, but he's in there. He's well, in person you now for, is it over a year in total? It, it's well, mind blowing. He, he, well, he, he, chronologically, it's more than a year, but whether it's, you know, on a, the aggregate, I think it's coming up on a year. The, the aggregate. Yeah. Yeah. You know, hidden for 300 anyway, I think, you know, uh, I can't mm -hmm. remember exactly, but it's it's certainly hidden in that area. And it's it's a dreadful, dreadful situation. And, uh, you know, I, I, 
again, it's, it's a function of the media. I mean, you know, there was a time, regardless of the rights and wrongs or anybody's point of view or anything, there was a time when media would be highlighting this man's situation. And, and you know, there might be an argument around who's right and who's wrong. And, and I mean, we all, you know, that's up to people themselves. But what I find now is that people are being steered by the media. It's so hostile to, to you know. And, and they actually, you know, they start conversations. I've had people start conversations with me, James, about it, where there is an assumption, even though they kind of know me and they kind of assume that I'm kind of going to go along with them. And when they sort of say something dismissive about, oh, I'm sick and tired of that Enoch Burke thing, you know? And I said, well, well uh, who are, uh, at whom are you directing your sickness and tiredness? And so, you know, and, you know, generally they, they're, they're blaming him. I said, well, in what sense is it his fault? He, he, he is standing up for your right mm. to say what is true. I said, you know, like if that, if I pointed to the wall, like the, your walls are white in your, in your shop here. Now, if uh, somebody came into you tomorrow, drew harass or somebody and said, henceforth, that color is black. Mm. Would you agree with that? Would you take up that uh, challenge and, and say, well, now I have my walls white, they're black, they're black. That's effectively what's happened here. In fact, it's far more serious than that because it's about the most fundamental fact of human existence, which yeah. is the complementarity of man and woman, out of which the new life become, emerges. This is, so what he's doing is, you know, there's no argument about all this nonsense about oh, he's, he needs, all he has to do is purge his contempt. This is all <laughs> at the end, this is downstream from the fundamental question that he is speaking for, he is defending the right not to be compelled to say something that is untrue. Yeah. And you know what? When you're talking to a lot of people, this the sad thing about it is, is that they're so used to acquiescing. It's a Pavlovian response of ducking away and not facing their problems that they actually do not know when you're referring to a man of principles, like a principled man in this environment that we're in, in this storm, you know, of yeah. nonsense. They're so used to taking the easiest path, the pathway, it's known the saying, the pathway of least resistance. And well, that's actually how they're conditioned to not stand it, up. It's pathetic again. It's Pavlovian. You know, they're actually responding to dog whistles that actually uh, tell them how they're supposed to respond. I mean, I, 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 we encountered that in the early days when we took our legal action with Seven Gemma. You know, like the, the hostility from people who really shouldn't be bothered what, why, what I'm doing, you know, up on the four courts. Yeah. So what? What's it? What's it got to do with you? But yeah. on RTE, it was telling them. In this, in the end, though, it was telling them that I was uh, an enemy of the people or something. You know, I don't know, uh, a risk to, to to the common good or some, some nonsense. Uh, and they had to let it let rip at me then. And yeah. and you know, if you, now if you ask them, they probably couldn't even remember it. You know. Yeah. 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 No. No. Absolutely. Yeah. The old. Hippocampus, the, the psyche has been so badly damaged. I don't know that I mentioned it before, but with this story, and we're going to move on after that, but this is really, this tops it up. There was a woman there in a bar, and it was actually in Galway, and there was a couple of years back, and I happened to mention casually, because she seemed nice, she seemed like an affable lady, and we got onto the conversation of what was going on, and I told her, now she had the slave muzzle on, right, and uh, you could see that she was a good-looking woman in her day but she was far too young to be moving about, and she was a bit creaky, and I'd already... Uh, found out the information that she was on about four or diff five different types of medication. And it's ever since 2020, believe it or not. So this is in 2022. So this is so much pain. I mean, so much of this trauma and propaganda, it's so dangerous for people. It's so deleterious for them psychologically. And that leads on then physiologically, of course, right? So this woman and her business was closed down. Now check this out, every box ticked out. It used to be a pub that was thriving and it did food. And she said, even her own admission, she said that, Oh, you know, it's the business has been devastated ever since the spoof 19. So all of this stuff has came on. Now, a little bit down the way, you got mentioned anyway. And she had actually said that damn fella, like, why doesn't he just quit it? But it's just remarkable that you would be the one thing in defense of her business being destroyed, her mental and physical health effectively being destroyed. And guess who, who her enemy was? The one person that was looking to ameliorate her situation. Now, well, that is, it, these are the type of zombies that are out there, John. There, there you have it in a nutshell, James. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, I, 
I, I had a similar situation myself. I, I think I might have talked about it before. But, you know, a few, right in the middle of it, or shortly after it had peaked and was, I think, about early, late 20 or early 21, uh, I got a, this guy got in touch with me that I'd been in touch with years ago when he was having huge problems in the family courts. And this guy was completely kind of, you know, uh, eviscerated by corrupt judges. Uh, like he, he was in a situation like where he had children, which he was rearing them himself. His wife wasn't involved. He had properties all over the world and he was, you know, doing very well. And he ended up losing all access to his children, losing all his property and essentially living in a holiday home, which was owned, had been owned by his late father and his siblings were trying to get him out of it. And I remember talking to this man and, you know, I mentioned, I, I was wondering like, what was he going to say about the co-ed, you know, and uh, eventually I dropped it in and he says, oh, well, you know, it was a very serious virus and blah, I said, no, it wasn't. <laughs> and, but then at one point, you know, I, it got even funnier because I, I was talking to him about the family courts and I, I made some kind of a, a speech about the, the, the bias of them against men and all that. And the next thing he went into this kind of speech himself, uh, which about the terrible treatment of women down through history and all this. And, 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 and he culminated in this thing about the uh, yarn about that. You know, he says that uh, men were allowed to have a stick, he says, an ash plant, he says, that was, you know, there was no, could be no wider, no thicker than their tongue to beat their wives with. I says, are you for real? Are you for real? You have been stripped by this system on behalf of a woman. You've been, you've had, you've, your children stolen, your houses stolen, your money stolen. And you're telling me, you're repeating a myth that has basically zero substance whatsoever. You, you, have, you don't know what's going on. And this yeah. is a lovely guy, like, you know, and, and a smart guy in, in, in lots of other ways, obviously. Yeah, you know, take like, it easy on using that word, John. <laughs> Well, you know, but he, you know what I mean? It's, I know there's a compartmentalization of smart in, in this, these issues. But I mean, you see guys who's good at turning a, a pound or a euro or a dollar. Um, yeah. But he, he can't actually see what's in front of his nose. Social and yeah. emotional intelligence is, is all pickled. Yeah. Yeah. And, but I mean, that's, I, I kind of meet that all the time. You know, I mean, that's again the Pavlovian thing about, you know, people are told what to think. Like, I mean, it's like I was saying about, you know, I was on a plane recently. This kind of said it all for me, you know, and uh, there was a couple of people, women talking in the two inner seats. I was in the aisle seat and before we were taken off. And, you know, they were talking about, uh, we were against leaving from Malaga, you know, and there's a drought there for the last few years, you know, and, you know, there's all kinds of measures about water and washing your car, not washing your car. And the reservoirs are only 9% full or something and all that. It's not, it's very serious. Although it's going to rain this week and that's good news. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, I bet one point, one of the women, you know, she kind of pulled herself up to her full height. And she says to the other one, she says, well, I think it's climate change. That's what I think. Mm. And I was just thinking, to, I wonder how long she spent thinking about that. And I had this image of her, you know, James, you know, a bit like old Ratzinger, you know. Ratzinger, when he was doing the thinking, he used to lie on the couch and stare at the ceiling, you know. And I'd say she spent maybe weeks yeah. there on the couch looking up at the scene and thinking out and finally she got up and said climate change that's mm. what i think you know like but people don't think yeah yeah they think except they think the things they're given to think and that complements your point earlier the idea is to drill it in their head in effectively right the idea is to say it so many times that it's tattooed into their consciousness and actually yeah. what bypassed is any reason so they haven't scrutinized it but it's actually just there and it's there then just to be it's just like pressing a button like the npc just goes climate change and that's it no, they can't yeah. even elaborate on that oh interesting that sounds like a well, nebulous statement climate change could you elaborate on that and then they probably they're 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 programmed then for an ad hominem wait a minute are you a climate denier <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's right. Well, they have that that that, that up talk. You know, they don't have to know anything to support their argument. They just have to be able to, you know, uh, tell you that you're, a, yeah, denier, a good word. Uh, but you see, this is the way that it's all happened now. And 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 
people have no idea because we're going through the same rituals and we're going through this, you know, the same kind of procedures, but they have an entirely different outcome and a different meaning uh, because we're not actually uh, engaging in the same way. I mean, at once, once upon a time, no matter what you, where you had got your opinion, it was yours because you had formulated on the basis of facts or of experience and so on. Now that doesn't follow at all, and and, and on the contrary, that that's the last thing it's going to be. But I mean that that kind of thing. I've I've had that. It's very interesting to see it, like when you're under, you know, in the in the in the sights of it. You know that 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 uh, Pavlovian uh, Pavlovian mentality, that um, you know uh, that, that they you know they can lo have lost everything. Like you know, you know their arse will have fallen off, but they'll yeah. still think. That it's my fault or that i should have stayed silent and everything would have been all right you know yeah well you have to say that demoralization is a massive aspect of that but look at i am encountering as well you know a different different reaction that some people that were overwhelmed with all the spoof 19 nonsense i think they're coming out of a little bit of a haze and this of course the mass uncontrolled illegal immigration really is doing that because they can see it's bad. They can see it's intensifying, and they can see, of course, that the rats and the crime syndicate. There's, there's no, there's no leave up. They're driving that into gear. So let's hope, and you know, people armed with this information, so share well, off this conversation, you know, to other people, and this will arm you. The key thing is here, John, the communicational skills. I believe they have this, but they cannot. You mentioned formulate. They cannot formulate. They can, they can conceptualize in their head what they should say, but they can't really formulate or articulate the words. I think that's a massive impediment, actually, to a lot of people. They don't really have the confidence yet. And what they generally do is they take a step back, don't they? They say, I'm not a racist. I'm not a racist. Don't ever do that. Don't ever take a step back. You know, because a lot of these people that have these ideas implanted in their head, right, it's not rational. So they think that they're leading some inquisition. That's one of the biggest things. They think that they're going to critique and scrutinize what you're saying without actually having any information that they can explain themselves, which is mad. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, well that, that's that's again why they, they need to find the, the, the alternative media. And, and, you know, because that's the way we all acquire mm. our understanding of things, you know, obviously through experience, but by hearing other perspectives. And, and you know you know taking the parts that fit or make sense to us and and maybe leaving the rest on going back again and getting it if it, if it might later on seem uh, to be opposite uh, but you know that's absent they don't hear anything that isn't the approved narrative yeah. and, and therefore they don't know there's any perspective other than error and disinformation and misinformation yeah. And, and this mal is, mal yeah. malinformation apparently is uh, malinformation. That's the third one that come up with now. And that's oh, yeah. mal malinformation. The definition of malinformation is apparently things that are true, but which cause people to mistrust the government. That's correct. I've heard it goes against the, the government narrative. So mal is obviously means bad. So it's essentially yes. bad information. So yes. it's yeah, yeah. Accurate. So unhelpful so, information. But unhelpful so to who? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So an example of that would be, of course, if Buka Buka came over here and he raped and murdered an Irish woman, that this is malinformation to say, you know, he's, uh, you know, he came over from sub-Saharan Africa two weeks ago. Yeah, they because that will, that will make people angry. And, yeah. and they don't like us when we're angry. Absolutely. Like the, yes. It's like the Incredible Hulk, you know. They don't like yeah. us when we're angry. But we're getting angrier and, and uh, I don't think they're going to be able to do much about that and when it when it when it happens. I do think I do think they're they're running away now. They're they're getting scared. They're beginning they to see the, the, the you know the the, the 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 sulfur in the air and they're beginning to understand that, you know, people understand like it's not complicated. They are destroying the country. Yeah. You know, it's obvious. Yeah. yeah they, it's have no so plan. Obvious. they have no yeah. plan. I, I mean, quite frankly, I mean, look. If you if you have a civilization, James, let's put it very roundly and crudely. If you have a civilization which is built by certain races of people, and then you eliminate those races and replace them with other races, what's the chances of the civilization surviving that? Nil, nil. It's no chance that you know. And that's, it, it, and that's so. That's what we're hearing, James. All these stories of of, of chaos and. Uh, you know, rape and all that. That's these are symptoms of that process in train. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's only and I, it's only a premature. Yeah, yeah. The Thomas Aquinas. I think that's it. You've covered that several times. So you know, uh, 
I don't think you need to mention it again, but I think, you know, his sentiments on that, on the idea of, you know, people coming into your into your uh, country, and that's from a long, long time ago, you know, I, I would subscribe to that, to Thomas Aquinas. Look, at, yeah. yeah, just want to touch, yeah, like briefly there on the, um, you know, actually before I do there, just a little bit of humour. I know that with this Eurovision now, so there's a Satanist anyway, right? We'll only touch on it because it's pathetic. Eurovision has been a, it's been a global homo event. It's to celebrate degeneracy, like basically for a long time. And look, and it's fine for a certain, you know, small section of the uh, population. They have their show. They can dress up everything. That's perfectly fine. I don't think it's, you know, what it's changed into now, what it's morphed into now is 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 something, you know, that's, you know, it's promoting, it's the promotion of degeneracy and all of these, these, and it's actually getting even worse. So, but I'll tell you this, there was a last Friday, so we're Saturday now, I went off to, there's a takeaway there beside a pub, and I went in there anyway to get a burger. So this was on Friday, right? They're inside in the bar, John, watching this Late Late Show. So what did it start off? It was some special Eurovision. They have this thing on the oak, and they're all, people jumping around, men dressed up as women, trannies and stuff, all this garbage. I'm only going in there literally for 10 minutes because they're busy in next door. And I said this, right? I said, someone said, oh, who do you think is going to win or something? And I was basically looking at it. I was going to about to really slag this fella off. And I said, look, I said, it's a global homo event anyway. You know, what I said is it's going to be someone. It's either going to be a tranny or a Satanist. That's what I said now, John, right? Now, this is the thing. I got a laugh from a few people. But this is the thing. Now, you like to get a good laugh there for a joke in a pub. You know, you can, ah, you're can you brimming full of mirth, generally speaking. But what was a little bit disconcerting here is they thought what I said to be was, you know, something obscure or abstract. Or, <laughs> that couldn't happen. And I think, well, who else did they think it was going to be some young lady with red hair and freckles singing about the rolling sand dunes of Donegal? I mean, we know how disreputable it's gone. So it turns out. It's like some hybrid between Marilyn Manson and Amy Bottle of Winehouse that has tattoos on her head. And I think this thing is bald as well. She has a, a thing of hair that's stapled onto her head. So, and this is who has been promoted at the moment. So, I mean, is there, is there a need to Well, you know, I, I, you know, it's kind of tragic in a way because, you know, that poor girl or whatever, you know, uh, she's been used by very sinister forces, I think, you know. This is a kind of a... Um, I call it a raid on public consciousness. You know, it's it's an attempt to basically to gaslight and to burlesque the people, you know, with the idea that, you know, the the rest of the world is good with this. The rest of Ireland is good with this. Your problem is your problem. And that that accentuates the mutism and the lockjaw, you see, that that people are afraid to even say, well, I didn't really like that. Well, I know it was very good now. She had lovely, I liked her hair, you know. Like, yeah. you know, uh, so, you know, this is more of it. This is more of it. You know, and yeah. and uh, uh, it's very sad. You know, and but I would I have predicted, Jane, that there's only two possible outcomes for this. One is that she will come last, and I have you know some knowledge of that myself. And uh, and the other is that she will win the Eurovision outright. And I think the most likely situation in which she will win it is if there's a big outcry in Ireland against her, because that's essentially what it's about. It's a yeah. way of kind of trying to develop that neurotic intergenerational conflict you know the oldsters who don't they're not cool and they're not hip you know but now we're so hip and satanist you know and this is our song this is our anthem now and you can go and you know yeah that's the vibe that's what they're trying to get that's what they're they trying want to get. it wants to be a talking point so it so it causes so much friction that's it and consternation and what they always do is they represent this sort of they're going to create some even possibly even they'll go as far as a pseudo consensus. So you'll have someone on the slimes to say that, oh, the reaction is wonderful and people, it's so new and innovative and the and the act and she's so talented. But like, you'll never actually come across the average person, Paddy or Bridie on the street that will say that. You'll, as you said, they've been now conditioned, you know, to give the insouciant shrug and not make eye contact and say, sure, Jenny, the weather, I suppose, there's a bit of rain on the way. <laughs> You see, that's part of the whole ideological uh, um, instrument they've been using. That idea of time moving forward and all of these so events going with time. Gay marriage is 2015, time for gay marriage. 2018, time for abortion. That this is like written in history and and this is essentially a totalitarian idea, actually, that history is already decided and you don't have any say in it. 
and 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 by the same token, so the people then the, what the reaction I've noticed to that is like people start off by being being amused by all this, and then they start to say, oh, well, no, no, no. I suppose you know you have to move with the times, you know, you know yeah. and 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 uh, you know live and let live, now is what I say, you know, and, and in the end, the next thing they are cheerleaders for this absolute bullshit. Yeah. And and you see that this this thing is the same kind of idea. It's to, to impress upon people that you don't get this, you don't get it. You see, you're slow and stupid and old, and you know you need to be kind of sharper and to be like us, you know. And yeah. uh, that's what it's all about. It's a it's a it's a gaslight. And uh, you know the make the important thing is to to know what it is and not be affected by it. I mean, ultimately at this stage now, you know. Eurovision, like they've been going on with this for years, like now, and and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And and uh, uh, what can they do next? You know, I mean, like at the end of the day, you know, and and the the thing about it is, you know, James, and this is really important to say that for all that, I, you know, the global homo thing is absolutely true, uh, uh, but nevertheless, it's something that needs to be said also that it isn't actually true to say that all about Eurovision is rubbish. Because if you look at a country like Sweden, for example, Sweden won the contest last year and they had a very good song. And they've okay. been very, over the last decade, they've had, I think, three wins out runs, three, two seconds or something. And because why? Because they studied it. I, about about 10 years ago, after the, 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 the it was like um, about 2013 or 11, 12 or 13, uh, I, I, I was invited over to London to, to take part in an event that was run by the Swedish Embassy in which they were trying, they were actually discussing Eurovision and discussing how to go about creating songs that would actually have cross continental appeal. And it's really interesting because they went into great detail researching that and the proof is in the pudding. As I say, they won it several times and they were really good songs. They're really beautifully melodic songs and beautiful and great musicians and great singers. Like, and, and it just goes to show that compared to what Ireland did is to kind of, you know, sour grapes type of thing, you know, and, and go down the road of just uh, burlesquing the contest and burlesquing the audience, you know, yeah. like that, you know, but again, it's, 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 it's part of our, 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 our official mentality now, this cynicism, you know, that that um, we're too clever for school, you know, too cool for school. Like and we don't, we don't, we don't have to, you know, try anymore. And the result is that everything is going to shit, and and uh, nobody's able to do anything about it. And and so we just, we just have to wider it. This isn't the worst thing that's happened. It doesn't really matter that much. But I think it is important that people don't get wound up about it because that's the yeah. fault. Barrel, you, know? you know that's that's what they want sorry you were sweden actually good and they're putting in an effort there to actually good vocals and a song and lyrics okay fair enough i'm only i'm not some eurovision aficionado anyway i just remembered that last <laughs> year I was in either, James, but it's, it's it's i've always taken the view about eurovision that it's there and like the kids love it i mean like this is in a real dilemma for people now like i have uh, you know step grandchildren like and and their mother would love to be able to let them stay up and watch eurovision because they like that kind of stuff, you know, and they, they, they get all, you know, it's fun, you know. But, but once you know, upon a really... time, once upon a yeah. time, you know, you know, I remember when I was a kid as well, you had these, what was it, Johnny, the... Johnny Logan and yeah. Yeah, well, you know, the creeps who run things now in this country, they, they, in Ireland now, don't, they don't care anymore about anybody, any more than they care, I and mean, we full circle, that girl in the school come, comes home crying. That's, that's the story of Ireland now, and it's to do with the kind of people in power in it, who are essentially the most appalling mediocrities in every conceivable way they are vicious nasty obnoxious people mm. and you know we need to get out of this phase really fast we have to defeat these people and we have to move on to a new phase of irish life that's our only hope uh, for our children uh, because otherwise they will be homeless and destitute in the world well, you know, and that's it, John, and it's keep speaking the truth. And I think it has to get a levels of anger. There's actually emotion, you know, it's coming out of this 
the state of lassitude is a good word. It's getting out of that state and starting to get a little bit more animated and speak out. Look, we're up to an hour and 40, of course, my guest for the 17th time is the rock star here, John Waters. Absolutely brilliant. And I love it. And we've gone up to 260. Actually, the last one. Yeah. So maybe the boot has lifted a small bit. So absolutely share that in John Substack. Uh, I have that in the links and it's provided in the links below. So you go on there, subscribe and you can support John there on that. I mean, look at very briefly, John, I suppose now that we're coming up an hour and 40, we have, you know, there's two referendums there coming out. One, of course, they're anti-family referendums anyway. This is coming soon enough on March the 8th. So it's this women in marriage. One of them is basically removing references of women. Can you believe that? Laughable. This is what we're having a referendum. In the absolute, in the in the mayhem that we are in, in Ireland, you know, at the moment, this is what, can you believe it? This is what... The, the in the crime syndicate they're interested in having you know the word woman removed out of the constitution as if that's a and then well, the other one is obviously the concept of the family well, there. Yeah. well james you see you got to be more precise than that because it's actually much worse than that yeah uh, you know here we are talking about replacement we're talking mm -hmm. about mass influxes of indifferent aliens who yeah. couldn't care less where they are so long as the money is right now at the same time, our demographic, our demography is going through the floor. Like probably the indigenous in, uh, uh, fertility rate is hitting 1.1, 1.2 max. Yeah. Like, uh, and that means that we're half of what it will take to replace our, our population, as they say, going forward, right? Now that means that there's a pincer movement afoot. There's the people coming in and then there, there's this kind of clamper on the gro possibility of growth of our demographic. And this, because this is essentially what you said, it's an anti-family device. It's a, it, these two of them, well, the, one of them is uh, the woman in the home thing. It's the eliminating the word mother and the word woman from the constitution. There will be two mentions left of women in a generic kind of sense, and that would be it. Uh, and they'll probably come on from for those later. Uh, and, you know, clearly that's, you know, directed at all kinds of things, is to, to weaken the capacity of people to care for their homes, you know, to, to, to have children, to, yeah. to have big families, you know, to be to, you know, that in other words, they want to continue making sure that more father and mother have to go out uh, to work to pay for the roof yeah. over their heads. Now, whereas if you look at, say, Hungary, where you have Viktor Orban, this far right, terrible man, he has an extraordinary uh, uh, system whereby women who have a ch uh, uh, children can get tax relief. And after four children, they are tax free for the rest of their lives. And so this is what is done in a sensible, intelligent country. Now, uh, uh, the other referendum then is uh, about the, the definition of family. Just the family, you see, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. And, and what they're doing, when the, you know, this has been, a, in a certain sense, this was a bugbear of mine for many years because I was trying to make the case that single fathers should be entitled to some comparable status to, as natural fathers of their children. Uh, and of course, the creeps who, who have been furthering gay and all this sort of stuff since uh, just basically spat in my face at the idea, and they're still doing it. They have total contempt for fatherhood and so on. But you know, you can tell, you know, but by their actions, shall you know them? But yeah, they, they're drink, they're going to introduce this concept now of durable relationships. Yeah, this is. You know, which is like um, durable relationships. Well, apparently, according to Miss uh, Miss Justice, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, she's Isabel the, McEntee, yeah. No, what? What's her name? McEntee. It was not McEntee. No, the the the, the Chief Supreme Court Justice. Oh, excuse uh, me. I thought you said Minister for Justice. Yeah. No, yeah. sorry. Uh, I forget her name. But it'll come back to me. Uh, but she's she's saying that now uh, a durable relationship is a couple that get lots of Christmas cards. Yeah. yeah, so there you have it. Now, Lots of gas there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's what we've got to. You know what I mean? This is the same country. This is the Eurovision country. This is the, the, all of these things are connected. They are the mediocrities of, uh, in our midst now, risen to the highest offices in the land, and because of their their own sense of their own mediocrity, and they're not wrong about that. They are determined to destroy anything other than mediocrity beneath their feet and mm -hmm. and that's what's going on uh, yeah. uh so you know I, I obviously i would i mean i to be honest 
I'm 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 torn on this issue because I have disengaged entirely. Uh, yeah, from, I'm, I'm know, the same. Yeah, I, I'm the same. Like you know, I I don't I don't think I mean I don't as far I'm probably I've probably been struck off the register and I'm pretty sure I have because virtually anybody who had any possibility of voting has been struck off. They've been going wrong, going through the whole thing with a blue pencil, removing anybody who looks the slightest bit, you know, unreliable from the point of view that they- I wouldn't they, be surprised. They... Oh yeah, that's for sure. And of course, every single incomer has been registered at least once. Uh, uh, but I would say it's, they wouldn't be that mean about it. You know, I'd say no more than the handouts, the handouts of votes would be pretty generous as well. Yeah, I'd say it's possibly even going through the motions. I'd say if they want to shoehorn it through, John, really they will. But um, so there well, we are. You know, I, I believe that the combine can win the Eurovision. I mean, they, look, the, if you look at recently what happened with the Booker Prize, a book about uh, uh, um, a far right coup in Ireland, which was written between 2018 and 2022, won the Booker Prize. Even though the story it tells is the direct antithesis, ideologically speaking, in other respects, of what was actually happening outside the author's window when he was writing it. So, you know, uh, this is where we are. I mean, and, and then by the same token, you know, I think they can make sure. But again, it'll only happen if people get excited about it, if the Eurovision thing, if they get really kind of wound up and start making, you know, and protesting or anything like that, then. The, the, the combine will become very interested in the publicity value of this. And I think it's just better to say, oh, yeah, whatever, you know, oh, yeah, very good song. Oh, yeah, I thought it was a very nice song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Paddy would be good at that kind of bullshit. Oh, no, fair, fair. No, I thought, yeah. No, no I didn't, I couldn't make out the words at all, but uh, just a nice old tune to it. All the same. <laughs> Man, what, one of your most legendary lines ever, you said, any opportunity that Paddy has for virtue signaling, he'll get the ball. And he'll kick it over the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So, so, uh, but I mean, it, I think he has to be like cute on this one. You know, just let it lie, let it lie. That could look at it. He's used bad. to. It's like we said, the Pavlovian responses to let nearly everything lie. I mean, unfortunately, Paddy's been taken out of the church. He has the football on the screen. Uh, you know, if you want some food, you can give Mohammed a text on the phone and he come, Mohammed comes down with a with a fried pizza or a kebab and knocks on the door and he's in, Paddy's in his pod and I don't think he needs to uh, engage or get get involved in anything controversial, I think, you know, plain uh, sailing, least pattern, controversial, John. Oh, no, I, I do like to live and let live, 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 that was my attitude. Uh, but, you know, the time will come when it comes knocking on his door and then, then that's, 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 at the end of the day, that's going to happen, you know. Unfortunately, this is this is going one way unless we stop it. It's going to keep going until we stop it. And yeah. you know, don't buy into this thing of their back and off. But this all just lies, more like, you know, they're going to keep pushing until they finish the job. And the job essentially means the elimination of Ireland. That's the that's the project. Yeah. Well, that that's that's the vector that we're on. Look at okay, absolutely fantastic. There, you know, we're just over there an hour and forty five minutes. And uh, look, anything else there you want to add there to that, John? No, I think that's about it. No, James, uh, uh, that, that, nothing just to, to uh, say that. So I think, as I say, to repeat, I suppose, that so this is a, this is going to be a momentous year, I think. You know, I think that it could be quite a dark year. I don't want to be black pilling people, but I think we need to be realistic that, you know, we need to alert ourselves to, to and each other to what's coming down the tracks. Yeah. These people yeah. were... These people are carrying out the orders of ruthless people who don't care about humanity in any way, shape or form. And, yeah. and you can see it in the visage and the, the, the demeanor of these people that they have inherited or acquired or by contagion, that same mentality. And that is yeah. informing, you know, whether you're talking about the Garda Commissioner or the Taoiseach or the Taunished or the Minister for Justice, you see the same demeanor in them all, that they're there and they are an occupying force in their own country uh, and yes. they, they have resigned as irish people insofar well they, the commissioner of the guard he was never irish anyway but uh, yeah. uh he, he's loyalty is to the king of england well, the issue isn't either. yeah but uh, <laughs> but the rest of them are no better really and yeah. and uh, we need to understand that and that you know that's really important like, that we when we see them that we un that that comes into our head you know that we don't think oh there's the teacher no there's the viceroy yeah yeah, 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 the bike's right. I mean, it's the latest score, you know? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. The occupying force, absolutely. Just to add, and as well, a little bit of good news there with the World Homicide Organization. Uh, it seems like that's uh, the scandemic of the Treat Haruni doesn't seem to be actually going according to plan. They actually had to, with an Article 55 of the United Nances, they had to say what their proposal was on and it had to be provided there to um, a lot of the uh, nations that actually hasn't been done. Now, will they double back and break their own rules? That could well be. But there's also another, and I was listening to it uh, from Ben Rubin, absolutely fantastic. He talks about genomics, very on the ball. You can catch him over there. He sometimes pops in on the UK column, but he was actually talking about this, this massive now, there seems to be uh, banging heads there, different nations. And of course, it all comes down to the money. So they're thinking, who who's getting the spoils really off this? And there seems to be, uh, we'll, we'll say, only a very, very small minority of people that seems to want everything, you know, the whole, you'll own nothing and be happy. And it seems okay. like there's nations that don't care about their people. It doesn't care what pharma, what uh, pharmacological transmutation has popped into their bloodstream. That doesn't bother them. But it's the cash, it's the spoils. So there's an argument with the spoils at the moment, which is good. Well... Yeah, well, that is good. Yeah, there are. There, I mean, you know, that is such a, an extraordinary, uh, you know, push for power that mm. it's it it it, it seemed to be quite a long shot. And but for a while there, it was looking like they might actually de de deliver it. But I think now that I mean, enough countries are waking up. A lot of the Europe, Eastern European countries have, are basically saying no, and and you know that's a very interesting thing, like because it's very. You know, at the very least, out of all this, no matter how bad it goes in the West, in Western Europe and in America, if if Eastern European can, if, if Eastern Europe can hold together, I mean, it, it has the, the the longest and most recent memory of of, of tyranny in, in 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 on the continent, and uh, you know, it's 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 it is remembering, and and, it, and you know, a lot of those countries are extraordinarily sensible, you know, and and. Uh, you know, I'm going out there next next week out to Hungary, and and uh, like that that's a country that I you know it's it's like almost like a Western like a Western European country in the 60s or 70s, you know, from all accounts that I've had of it, and you know these are highly civilized peoples, you know, and and uh, yet here we are regressing at a speed of knots, speeding back towards the the, the Middle Ages, like into and neo-feudalism you know where we would have our overlords a handful of of, of oligarchs dictating how we how we think and, and how we how we live and, and 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 all of the institutions the liberal institutions all of the liberal voices all stilled all quieted uh in 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 the face of all this overnight you know at the ides of march in 2020 you know all silent from then on st patrick's day you know yeah. They felt silent and 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 haven't been heard from since, other than to to try to silence everybody else, and um, so you know it is a shocking thing. But that treaty, you know, you know, it, it's incredible. All of this is incredible that that yeah. there could be such a, a power play, that there could be such an attempt yeah. to basically yeah. commandeer uh, on a whim basis on a, on a, the basically that that they would have a, a tyranny on speed dial, you know. Uh, uh, in so all, grandiose, you know. so grandiose to think. Yeah. It's so grandiose yeah. to think that that could actually happen. But listen, you're going over to Hungary. That's absolutely fantastic. You'll be making a few connections there, um, over there. And look at if things really, really get bad and Ireland's completely lost. You know what I mean? You might get an old holding over there. And if that's the case, John, you know, I'll send you an old email, and there'll be a, a space on the couch there for me if things really oh. go belly up here. <laughs> Uh, well, it certainly it won't be the part. It won't be the furthest thing from my thoughts now when I'm out there. I'll be looking at property eventually, you know, just to see how the prices are going. Uh, but uh, you know, seriously, it is. You know, when you actually look at the policies that that were bad. I mean, of course, in, in this moronic country, like he's, he's d d dismissed as far right and all this nonsense. He's he's a man who actually has instituted these extraordinary policies to support families, and it's working. Yeah. Well, he is now reboot, rebooting the Hungarian uh, demographics. And, yeah, demographics. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and they take seriously the idea of their country. They love their country. They mm -hmm. they understand the necessity for an integrity to culture and so on. And uh, these are simple ideas. You know, they're old ideas. They're obvious ideas. But in, yeah. in this country, nothing is simple. Nothing is uh, obvious, and nothing is old because you're not allowed to be old in this country. They. They put whether you're an idea or a person, they put you down at the earliest possible opportunity. 
yeah yeah okay look at absolutely uh you know fantastic if very enjoyable uh, thanks to everybody there that was in there they're all of course as usual singing your praises remember share 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 and uh you know support people like us our work you know as i said you can there's links there as i said especially john you go over right now and uh check out onto the uh, on chain there and uh see what's there it's absolutely top of the range i think we're going to leave it at that and it's uh it's a saturday night we did go up to over i think it was maybe 265 at one stage a little bit lower than and than the last stream so um but you know absolutely fantastic it is a saturday night and we know that what paddy does on a saturday night paddy goes out for a gallon of electric lemonade with Friday. So look at maybe people will be catching up with this stream there into the future. So look at fantastic, John. And last year, word to you, I think you're pretty much wrapped up and you said a lot of fantastic, of course, as usual, cogent points, you know, salient uh, uh, comments. Yeah, of course, as usual. Well, no, nothing much to add, uh, James, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll speak again, I'm sure, before long. We, we, we will be hitting the 20 now, hopefully, by the middle of the year. Go on, your boy, as they say. Who up out of that? Okay, look at God bless. Good night, everybody. Thank you.